Madeline, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having your, us to your house. Of this course. is beautiful. Thanks. I'm surprised for a 17 year old girl, like it's not, there's not bodies on the floor from late night parties. Hell no. There's not trash. It, off camera, this place is very clean. Um, Mom, I'm doing good. <laughs> Mom, I made it to Forbes. Yes, oh yeah. Wow, that's kind of dope. Yeah, why not? Kind of, a, kind of a subtle flex. I'm excited, I'm excited to sit down with you because when you're interesting, you're funny, everything. Thank you. But your fans will watch this. Like I sit down with a lot of you mm -hmm. know big YouTubers and influencers or whatever you guys want to call yourself today, mm -hmm. creators. And you know they got a bunch of followers and stuff. But then mm -hmm. I look at the view times of the interview and mm -hmm. it's like two minutes. And I go, their fans aren't really engaged. Y'all better fucking watch this you, shit. <laughs> but I know you guys will watch it. That's the beauty of your fans. Like I was looking at your Instagram last mm -hmm. night, and in a year period, like I went back a year mm -hmm. and you were getting like 15,000 likes mm -hmm. um, a post and then I was looking last night like you have 4 million followers which is good right. but not as much as some of the other no. bigger Instagrammers out there totally but you're getting 50, you know 1.5 million likes talk about your engagement like how did this happen oh I'm very confused because I have no clue how it happened and I'm like I mean I'm pumped but it definitely like doesn't it's very not normal so I'm like what did I do what like I there's no formula I just like existed and hoped for the best and just like put out shit as much as I could and like had fun, took pictures with my friends and was like, we'll see what the fuck happens. And like it just did well, but I like don't have any explanation. How long was, did it take to find your character? Right, you're yeah. pretty, the, you're the same really off camera when we were talking and like right now. I would She's hope the same so. girl, but like. I'm too lazy to come up with some sort of fake bitch. Like, I mean, it's just, it, it has to be me all the time, you know? But was that the first time you were like real, like the Emma Chamberlain we know now, sarcastic, funny? Was like the first video you're like, let, let it hang out, like I'm gonna be me? Yeah, so like I, yeah, it, it definitely, actually, I don't even think then it was me. I think it took me until, probably up until recently, not up until recently, but like, Maybe like five months ago is when I was like really started being completely like absolutely the same, abs like no difference, no like weird camera anxiety, like nothing at all. That was probably like five months ago. Is that hard? Like I can't imagine, like it's one thing having a conversation, like I can handle this. Yes. But like talking to a camera by yourself and like being comfortable and being funny and engaging. It like, feels did that take a while? weird. It's different than being funny in class. Absolutely. Like did that take you a while to learn that skill? When you're filming a video by yourself, you have to, s you say those things. But you, you don't have but you don't to play get a reaction. Of. So then you have to almost make yourself laugh. And it's like a weird, like you have to make jokes that you think are funny almost like you do when you're like just chilling and something subconsciously happens in your head and you like make a joke. You don't even realize you do it, but you like make jokes in your head all the time to yourself, mm -hmm. to amuse yourself. But then when you're like filming yourself alone, you have to just verbalize it. And it's like fun because it's, you know, funny for yourself. Who knows if it's gonna be funny for everyone else, but that's not really what matters. But you is know. it not as satisfying? Like, did you ever want to, because you're obviously super funny. It's totally and not good satisfying, writer. yeah. Did you ever want to be like a stand-up comedian where you get, if it's something funny, like you immediately see the payoff. That Instead scares of now, me. where you never really get the payoff. You don't know if somebody, right. you don't know if somebody right now is laughing at something you just said. Totally. They might, they might not, who knows? Absolutely, like I, I the thing about stand-up and stuff like that is that I think there's some beauty in the part, in the fact there's some beauty in the fact that like you don't get the immediate response because I get to go back and I get to look through it and be like, okay, that joke was fucking terrible. Cut it out. Only leaving the best. And now it's funnier. And then it's like good. So like, I don't know. I think doing something where I got an immediate reaction would scare the fuck out of me and I'd probably be less funny. But I don't even think I'm funny anyways. I That's, never laugh at my own jokes. That is bullshit. And I want to talk Twitter now. Because I follow you. you on Twitter. <gasps> You give shout out to your Twitter handle. We'll put up your little Twitter At Emma thing Chamberlain. Here. It used to be at Emma Chamby, but then I finessed and I changed it to at Emma Chamberlain so that I wouldn't have to embarrass myself with my fifth grade username. Thank you, God. I think you're, not only are you funny, like there's, there's one thing like kind of being funny mm -hmm. or like Vine funny, you know, yeah. I can be funny for five seconds or right. something. But like you have a different mind. You're funnier than the average Instagram Thank or you. YouTuber wow. because you're a good writer and you could tell. And Thank on you. Twitter, you really see it, right? Thank it's you. one thing just being funny on YouTube 
and you, like you what's that reggae horn thing that you use that uh, oh yeah yeah that makes anything funny oh like, absolutely you could put that in the middle of anything we'll put it in insert here david insert that reggae thing i love that yeah uh, but twitter like you have to write you can't just write. rely on a gag or a prop or something like that to yes. make people laugh and like my funny my most favorite tweet of all time uh -huh. and we'll insert that here so you guys can see it uh -huh. was the true religion gene one where yes. you put a picture of an ass of a true religion uh -huh. gene with the pockets and stuff and yep. said try making your ass look good without these you can't can't. Very true. No, I love Twitter because I remember I didn't get it at first. Like I literally like didn't get it. Like I, I would go on there and I'd be like, how are people coming up with this shit? I don't get it. I don't get how it works. I like don't even enjoy it. Like I don't, it, whatever. I spent enough time on it and I taught myself how to love it. Now I'm obsessed with it. It's probably my second, it's definitely my second favorite after Insta. YouTube. Oh, YouTube? No, Even after YouTube. Insta? So, yeah. Because you can post more, too. Yes. Yeah, so, like, Instagram's fun, but it's more stressful. Like, I don't really enjoy Instagram that much. I mean, it's just, like, a lot of pressure, and, like, you want to look good. Whereas with Twitter, you can be like, sup, bitch? And, like, it's, like, fun. <laughs> um, so, I love it. And, like, I get to kind of, you know, like, put my thoughts into it and, like, stuff that, like, I can't necessarily put into a video. Like, it'll be, like, my funny ideas that, like, come up in my head or they're funny to me anyways, not really to anybody else, but like when they pop them into my head and like I'm not filming or not doing anything, it's like, well, might as well use it for a tweet. And mm -hmm. then ding, and then it's in. Instead of just throwing that away. Right, it's like, why do that when I could put it into a tweet? Like literally all my friends, you can ask any of them, they'd be like, Emma's just sitting there and she'll be like, oh my God, such a good tweet idea. And then I'll like tweet it. And it's like, or, you know, we'll be talking, having a conversation and something will like pop into my head. Um, it's definitely a fun, creative thing for me. Like I reached out on, I think Instagram, follow me at Matraw1, you'll see it up here, I need fans. Emma fans, chamber crew, chamber go, squad, go off. come follow me. Absolutely. But I, they kind of gave me like their favorite ones and mm -hmm. like talk about like how these even came about. One, the first one was, I can't believe I just peed in a urinal and I enjoyed it. Yes, that didn't in fact happen. That was actually two tweets. I can't believe I just peed in a ur urinal five minutes later and I enjoyed it. Yes, so basically I was at a gas station with my friends and um, we were doing a road trip to like the desert area of California so we could take photos. And me, we, me and my friend both had to pee. And so we both went into the bathroom because I had to pee so bad. And she was like, this is so TMI, but I, this is a good story, so I really don't care. Um, I let her have the toilet and I fucking peed in the urinal. And I'm not proud of it, but it was kind of fun. <laughs> and I was like, you know, what can you do? What can you do? And I mean, it was a good story for the kids. Yeah, it's good. And for the Twitter. Sure, why not? Yeah. Getting married in Bloomingdale's is flex. Yes. Why? Why is that flex? Because if you think about it, when you go into Bloomingdale's, it's kind of pretty. It's like kind of like pretty in there, but at the same time, it's also a department store, but it's like still kind of a flex. It's like, it's almost like getting married in like a Best Western. It's like, it's kind of nice, but like it's not. So like, it's like, I don't know where I was coming from with that. My taxi driver just told me he loves me. What the fuck? Getting hit. She's 68. Sorry, Justin and Haley, you're canceled. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because this was just after Justin and Haley got engaged. Everybody was fucking flipping out. I'm like, yo, bro, chill. Like, I just got a fucking 68-year-old man hitting on me in my taxi, Uber, whatever. Like, this is what's really up right now. Like, this is going to be, this is going to headline for sure. This is also very illegal. And also, he told me he loved me and then started playing me his favorite jazz mixtape. And I was like, this is love, for real. And um, we haven't talked since, and I fucking miss him. So if you're watching this, like, miss you. You're the best. Your mixtape sucked ass, but like I acted like I liked it to make you happy. It was fine. You were saying before we, we sat down, you were talking about your DMs. Like, you're 17, yeah. so Creeper's out there. Obviously, <laughs> she's not even old enough to get creepy messages, but you were saying, like, you're, you get offers to be elope. A lot of Europeans yes. and foreigners want to marry the you. The foreign men love to DM me and ask me to elope. The answer is always no. I've considered it a few times just because it's like, mm, money and foreign country and maybe, like, foreign foods and fun times. But no. No eloping for me. Now, you started your channel, it seems ridiculous, in June of 17, is that correct? Correct. And you were nominated for a Shorty Award for Breakout YouTuber of 2018. Correct. Which Shorty Award is the worst I, can, couldn't they come up with a better name for that? I know. Why is it Shorty Award? I feel offended. I know I'm short already, you don't need to tell me yeah. in your fucking award show. I but accept it. the award, you'll go. I right? mean, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, was it a shock you were so successful out of the gate? Like, what do your friends and family think? Honestly, 
they're not really, weirdly, they're not really like shocked by it. I am, yeah. but they're not. And I'm like, why? And they're like, I don't know. We just like knew you were gonna do something like that. And I was like, okay, thanks. Like, just cause you were always funny and entertaining as a kid? Well, I, it was weird. When I was younger, I had this weird gut feeling and I was like, I know that I'm gonna use my personality in a way one day for like something to benefit me, but I didn't know how because I always had like a really outgoing personality and I was always like really friendly and like kind of, you know, outgoing. And I don't know, it was just like something that people really liked about me. It was like my one thing that I was known for, I guess. And like, you know, I was kind of, I had my little class clown moments too and shit like that. And so like that was always what I was known for. And I was like, I want to use this for something, but I never knew what. And I always, always, I always loved YouTube and was obsessed with it. And so then it was just kind of like a given. I was like, we're just going to go for it. And I had done, I'd watched so much of it and I knew so much about it and I knew how to edit and stuff like that. Cause I taught myself when I was younger, cause I had tried to start many YouTube channels in my life. And I don't know, like it just kind of came to me really naturally because I watched it so much and because my intentions were so pure too. It wasn't like, Oh, I want to do YouTube because I know you can make money. I didn't even realize you could make money. Like I knew you could, but I didn't get it. That wasn't the motivation behind at me. all. I just wanted to do it. Cause I was like kind of sad at the time. And I was like, let's get our mind off things, sis. Let's have some fun, you mm -hmm. know? And I did. And it was, and it really has been a good, a, like a very positive growing journey. Yeah. Yeah. And you had to grow up quick. Like, why did you move from San Fran originally? Like, I uh -huh. saw in a couple of videos you said, like, I'm going to talk about it. Right. But I never saw you talk about it. Did I miss videos? So basically, I was going to talk about it, but it's not, because my mom still lives in that apartment, it's not a good idea to talk about it because the, if this person that the issue came from, like, still knows where she lives. And so when I go home, oh wow, it's not that big of a deal. It wasn't that big of a deal, but it was definitely suspicious and like, it was scary. But, and I was fucking freaked out and I will definitely tell the story at one point. I think I'll give a brief little summary. Basically, it was like, when I would be home alone, someone would show up and like bang on my door, like whenever I was home alone and like would like pound on the door. And like for like 15 minutes and would just keep fucking going every time I was home alone for like two days in a row. Or and you look through the people, you so you know who the guy I was. I know who obviously. it was. And it was actually and a they, woman. Isn't he it was a woman. Really? Yes. And it was fucking f very, that almost scared me more because like women are psychotic because I am one. So I would know how we work. Um, but it, the creepier part is that's not creepy enough. But then she, she had to know, she was watching you to know you were home alone. Right. There's no, it was a coincidence two days in a row. And I called the cops and then we figured it out. But anyway, I'll do a story time on that one if it's safe to do so. And I'll just tell the whole story. The tea? Is that what you guys I'll, call I will it? spill the absolute full tea. But I was really, really freaked out. Like I like was, I remember the second time, like I was in my room f crying on the phone with the police. Like it was such a, I'm not going to spill too much because I want to do a really good story time on it one day. And I think it would be really good because it's quite the fucking story. But yeah, we're good. We live in a nice, um, community now in, in LA where we don't have, you know, there's some crazy people outside of my gate, but they can't get in. Yeah. So we're chilling. So when you, when you left, right, it was good timing because you were blowing up on YouTube yeah. at the time. So it was good timing. Like mm -hmm. you had to grow up real quick though. So you yeah. got success real quick. Mm -hmm. You're moving to LA. I have to learn how to pay rent. By yourself. Yeah. You're, you're Hollywood. Say, you can say what you want, but you got an agent. You're living Johnny Hollywood lifestyle. Right, right. Like, how was all that to navigate, too? You're paying your electric bill, meetings right. with agents, right. brand deals. Right. Um, I and mean, you're 17. I'm just, I think of it, I think of those aspects of it as, as a job. And then I think about the, like, actual creative aspect of it as, like, what I love to do kind of thing. So, like, I think about, like, okay, fuck, well, I need to do a brand deal because this one's kind of good, so I should probably do it, you know, even though I don't like to do it. Um, or I, it's not that I don't like to do it, but I like to be picky about it. So That's smart. Yeah. No because, sugar bear hair. No, absolutely not. Cause that <laughs> shit is just a stupid fucking gummy bear. No gummy Sorry. vitamins. Um, right? no, but like, you know, if I wear, I, <laughs> I'm definitely picky and I make sure it's something that I think is at least kind of cool or like not stupid. We do our best, but like, um, yeah. And I don't know. I try to think about that part as like, well, this is my job and I do need to pay rent because 
I don't, I'm not going to starve here in LA. Like we need to fucking, we need to, you need to make some money. We need to eat good. Yeah. We need to have fun, you know? You need your almond And milk. be able to like, absolutely. And we need to be able to like, I like to be able to spoil my family and like friends and like buy them shit and like, you know, be able to also pay my rent and also pay my electric bill. Mm -hmm. um, Gucci so, sweatshirts for videos. Right. Like, like I need to be able to have fun and like feel, you know, I grew up with like not a lot of money. So, which is something that people don't know. Like people thought. I think so. well, yeah, I didn't because I figure San Fran costs a million dollars right. as a San Fran. I'm like privileged no, kid. Absolutely upper not. Class, so no. like my dad was an artist growing up, and my mom and my parents were divorced. So I had like separate incomes. So it was like each income was like its own. So I like kind of was like had to. It, it was not the in the area. The area is very wealthy, but like I wasn't. I was always like the most like you know I was the least wealthy friend I'd always be the one with like the least nice car and I'd always get made fun of in the smallest house and like you know whatever or like I lived in an apartment with my mom and that was the one that people usually would see and it was very not nice like the front lawn was like dirt and like it was like fucking old and had no insulation and was like so ugly and like it was very humbling though and I don't regret that at all I think that was really good but like people are so mean to me they're always like you fucking came from money and like so you didn't like you don't even appreciate what you have i'm like bro you don't get it like no I'm glad we're talking about this because like, i would have assumed you came from money too right no absolutely not white and girl so, san fran big boss. right no and so i like i remember like there was times when like i'd want to go to the movies with my mom and my mom would be like we can't and i'd be like why and she'd be like we just can't and i'd be like why and i'm like i really want to fucking see like bugs life like you bitch yeah and she'd be like no and so and and i don't know but I'm really grateful for that experience because, and you, think you know, that's a motiv motivating factor. Absolutely. Like, I never want to not have enough money to go to the movies. Yes. I want to yes. see Bugs Life whenever the fuck I want to see Bugs yes. Life. Yes, and like also my dad, like seeing my dad, he was an artist, and or he is an artist, and so like he paints paintings, and then like that's how he makes his money, and that's definitely a difficult living because it's like not. It's not steady. It's like it's nothing is guaranteed with it. So I've seen him go through times when he got sick for a little bit there and he couldn't paint and he couldn't do any physical like labor. So then like he had like, you know, it was a really hard time for our family and shit. And so we got through it and he's doing great now, but seeing that and having like no money at certain points and no one knew and whatever, it's fucking weird. Also like the rest of my family, like my like external family, it wasn't the same like Struggle. it wasn't the same situation. And so I've always been the one that like struggled financially depending on wherever I'm at. Like whether it's like my family with my larger family or like me with all my friends. And so now it's so, so cool that I can make my own money. Yeah. I'm like, fuck yes. Like it's my money. I can do whatever I want with it. I can like, you know, I earned it. And like, I don't have to feel guilty about spending it. And Are like, you I don't conservative now because Absolutely. of that. Like, yes. you gotta have your nest egg. But I also need to like give myself. You know, I need to reward myself. Mm. You know, I work fucking hard almost till I die um, every week. And even though it doesn't seem like it, because I put out one video, but we do what we can. Um, but yeah, things definitely pile up once you become more serious. Because it's like not just editing a video and posting it. It's like editing a video, posting it. Going to a meeting, going to another meeting, going to another meeting, going to another meeting, trying to like get some sleep, hanging out with, giving, you know, attention to your friends and family mm -hmm. because that's obviously very important to me because at the end of the day, like you need a support system. Absolutely. Now, that's, like it, it kind of does turn into a job like you talked about before. Instagram is yes. not as fun. Twitter, you can fuck around. Yes. What's up, bitches? How you doing? Yeah. But Instagram is not like that. No. Like now that you've got, like we talk about 1.5 million likes right. on Instagram and you're doing brand deals. Yeah. Is it pressure too? It's like. Shit, I did a brand deal. Right. What if it doesn't get a million likes? Right. What if what if it only gets X amount of views? Right. Like, oh shit. So right. is that always kind of in the back of your mind too? No. Really? I don't give a fuck. No. I'm just chilling. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna work the hardest I can. I'm gonna put out the best shit I can put out, whether it's photos, videos, tweets, whatever. And like, it's not up to me how it does. You know what I mean? And if it does bad, I'll figure that out. But I just try to use my own judgment and like make sure I'm, I'm doing the best I can and putting something out that I'm proud of. And usually that does, you know, usually people appreciate that. Um, but at the same time, nothing is like guaranteed. You know what I mean? 
And so if something doesn't work as well, like a picture or whatever, I don't take it to heart. I don't really look into it. I'm like, all right, well, I wanted to post that. I, I liked it. And like, if it didn't get received as well as it normally does, like, fuck it. It's not that deep. You yeah. know what I mean? And people put a lot of pressure on like, well, this is what works, so I'm only going to do this. And mm -hmm. that's not how you grow as like a person or like a creator or anything like that because in order to like develop yourself and figure out new things that work, you have to take a risk and that might mean that it doesn't work. Like you might have to try a few things, you know? Yeah, I interviewed um, Shane Dawson. Yeah. I got to know him and then interviewed his boyfriend too. Mm -hmm. His boyfriend, I was kind of asking him about like what he learned from Shane and he right. said, why Shane's been so successful is because he's constantly reinvents himself. Yes. If you look at what he was doing 10 years ago, Absolutely. and then now, like out of nowhere, he's doing like documentary series on right. Jeffree Star and totally. Jake Paul coming up. Jake one will probably be out by the time we do this. Yeah. But like, he's kind of like, where did that come from? That's absolutely what you need to do as a YouTuber. And I think for me, like if I look at what I was doing, even three months ago, it's very different than now. Mm -hmm. It's a similar, there's a lot of similarities and there is like, it's still me, you know what I mean? But my, type of content changes all the time. Like I used to do, I had a bunch of little series that I used to do when I was um, at home and like, you know, and I don't do those anymore. And like I, because I grew out of them to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. And like people are always like, bring this back, bring this back. And I'm like, no, because I grew out of it. I don't, I'm not inspired by the idea anymore. I don't want to do it. And um, you know, even though those did really well at the time, I don't really care. I'm not just going to like do something because it does well. Like that's to me so stupid. Like I want to do something that makes me fucking pumped. I'm like, this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. This is an inspiring idea. Like recently I've been liking to, you know, I've been traveling a lot. So I've been vlogging that a lot and the adventures that I have. And I've really enjoyed filming those. And like, that's kind of what I've, it, what and makes me feel good. And you take a different good. approach because yeah. I watch those too. Yeah. And I'm not, obviously not your demographic, right? Right. But I was watching those and it's different than the Instagram ho. Right. He's like, I'm in Fiji. What's up? Check right. out my butt. Right. Belfi, which I found out today, is a butt selfie. You know? I didn't even know that. A Emma does not do those, which is a good thing, right? Thank God. I will never do that. But you like Thank do you. it in a funny thing. Like you're still wearing a bikini and looking yeah. good and the lighting's great. Thank but you. But you're yeah. like, hey, I'm in Bora Bora. Where the fuck right. am I? Like still taking totally. a funny spin on it. Totally. Because I mean, it's fun to like, I know this is something that's always been interesting for me that I've kind of struggled with is the fact that like my YouTube and Twitter are very, uh, very messy, but in a very contained way. Like, you know, yeah. I'm not, I don't look good. I'm making jokes. You I look cuss. good. Fiji, Brian, Thank shout you. out. I mean, on Thank point, you. lighting's good. Yeah. Kini, you look but good. But like on like, on like YouTube and Twitter though, that is a different story. Like Instagram, Twitter, I try what, to look good. What is your Twitter picture? It looks like you got punched in the face when you were 10 years old. Yeah, that's literally what, what happened. No, so <laughs> I, I woke up with like pink eye um, and when I was like literally like 10 and I sent a photo to my mom on my little flip phone and that was the photo and I found it on my mom's Facebook and I was like, this is fucking everything. And so I made it my profile picture and now we are, here we are <laughs> a few months later and it's still there. But yeah, like, okay, that and my YouTube compared to like my Instagram, I've always felt like my Instagram is not it's still a part of me because I enjoy clothes and I enjoy like fashion and I obviously like to fucking, like I try to look good even though half the time I'm like, mm, that, mm. I'm, I'm very, I don't even know what I look like. You never know what you look like. Sure. You know what I mean? When you look at a photo of yourself. It's what do you like, mean? Of course you do. You see yourself on YouTube, no, on your computer, I, and No, I've looked at myself so much that I literally am like, who is she? I don't even know what she looks like. Sure. And so I have to see myself a fucking lot. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm just sick of me sick of at this point. But, um, but whatever. It's interesting because I interviewed uh, Lele Pons yeah. and I asked her like same question like you're like the relatable kind of ugly friend. Right. But that's bullshit because you're also yeah. modeling for Dolce & Gabbana Absolutely. and you're on the runway yeah. and you're looking super hot. Like, right. And she goes well both of are, are part of me right. Yeah. I was the ugly friend mm -hmm. and I can relate with that too. Mm -hmm. But now as I kind of grew out of that right. I'm also I like clothes. I'm a girl. I like fashion too. Right. And that's like fun to show that side. I think a lot of people um, it's so funny because when I moved to LA, people were like, Emma's Instagram is like, you know, whatever, like, she's like changing and all this shit. And I was like, yo, you can scroll the <laughs> who fuck say, who back. Who says this? Who is that? I don't even know. It's actually so funny. You click on the account and it's somebody with zero followers and zero posts because they just fucking made a hate account <laughs> just to hate on me or like to hate on people. I'm like, bro, like, use your regular account. Like, square up. Like, you fucking pussy. Like, I don't know. Like, it's so stupid. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I always have been this way like even when I was like back in the day like when I first started my YouTube um I would do shoots with my like 
best friend at the time and like my fucking dad and like we would always do shoots and like I always had Instagram photos. Your dad's kind of a YouTuber. I saw the yeah. one your road trip with yeah. him. Yeah, he's pretty funny. He's great. He's great. He's like really a reason why I am the way I am for sure. He's taught me a lot of things and he's very creative and stuff. So he's kind of always was the creative guy in the household and would kind of get my mind going. And like, you know, so that was cool and always showing me music and like kind of making my personality less dull. So thanks dad for you. Cause I'd be probably pretty fucking boring if you weren't my dad. Um, but yeah, and I don't know, it's, it's nice to have him around cause he just keeps me inspired for sure. And like when I'm having like a creative, like fucking meltdown, I just call him and I'm like, bro. And he's like, I know. You I broke get down it. with your dad, you call him bro. I'm like, dude fucking what the fuck dude like i'm like bro i can't edit a video for like my damn save my damn life right now he's like you'll figure it out i'm like dude please like no yeah i definitely do that with my dad he's like my bro for sure you like it seems like you're kind of with james charles and the dolan twins are your crew mm -hmm. but you also seem like uh, tana um, yeah you're kind of with her and you kind of come out of that chain mold yeah. too and you're kind of like a controversial youtuber in but I'm way. not really sure why. Though. Yeah, fucking tell me about it. I'm like, I, dude, I'm fucking chilling. Like, and everyone's like. There's no empty mm, beer bottles. You don't do drugs. No, you don't party. No. You're not hoeing it out on Instagram. No, it's so. Why it's, are you controversial? Because people want to be angry at me. And that's something that I've had to like come to terms with is that like I can literally sit there and breathe and do the exact same thing that I was doing before when I was getting the absolute most love in the world and I will still be hated on. People just, they saw what happened to me and what, they- What, you like, you blew up? Right, yeah. and like, and they want to hate me. Okay. And I fucking get it. I like, get it. I can't even be mad at them because I like, I get it. It's like, it's confusing and it's weird and like, people are like- People are jealous, I want those likes, right. I want those brand deals. Right. I want to be in Fiji. Right, and like, I get that shit. And like, I was also at one point a fan of like everybody, you know what I mean? And I'm still a fucking fan of like everybody and like, you know, just in a different way now. Um, and I, I mean, I get it. I understand why it's fucking, it's, it's annoying. I don't even know if I get it because even when I was a fan, when I'd see people's success, I was like, fuck yeah. Like yeah. I was always rooting for people like genuinely and yeah. like, like people that I was fans of. And so like- Like when you see and the good fans and people with like real engaged fans, like you look like, at James Charles and like, get that money sister. Yes, exactly. You know? And they're happy that totally, they're doing well. Totally, and so, and I think I do have a lot of that as well, but, um, but I mean, I, Has I think, that hurt you a little bit, that kind of label? And I'm not, I really yes. don't understand where it's coming from. Well, it actually, I had a really- with brand deals and business and stuff? Right, I mean, I definitely had a really Oh no, not with that. Okay. Um, it, it's been fine with that. It's the only. But well, you're not gonna get the target. It hurt know. me personally, honestly. Like I like had a nice like the past like. Mm, like I'm good. I'm actually really for the past like month I've been doing kind of I've been kind of slaying. I'm doing good, but like Flex like mentally, mode. I was getting only hate for a solid like month and a half, mm -hmm. and like I was like. I wanted to. I did want to quit for sure. I was like, I'm oh, just wow. gonna go fucking be a librarian. Like, fuck this. Like, I'll You'd just. You'd be the loudest librarian ever. Oh, I know. You'd be, be a horrible like, librarian. Fucking, you know, like, get the book in high five. I don't care. Like, I don't know. But um, yeah, I was really fucking sad. And like, and people noticed, and they were like, you know, she's not as active and stuff. It's really uninspiring when you fucking post a video and everybody's like you know, being like, ah, fuck you, like, go kill yourself. And you're like, ah, okay, you know, like, it's not like you want to post a video yeah. if, like, people are telling you to die. Like, whatever, but I got over it, and now I'm doing good. Do you think you're getting the respect you deserve? Like, I was surprised when I was doing my homework. Like, no one has done a long-form interview like this with you. Like, yeah. no major press. And, like, I was excited, like, mm -hmm. to sit down with you because you're interesting and you're Thank blowing you. up and you've got a lot going on. Yeah. And like the VidCon, VidCon didn't make you a featured creator. Mm -hmm. Like, are you getting the love, or are you just thinking you're? Are they not giving you love, or is just because you're not established yet and you're new? Well, it's been weird because I remember, in the very beginning, I had like the numbers of people that were getting certain brand deals or mm -hmm. like certain opportunities. Yeah. Like, but I wasn't getting any of those benefits, and I was like, this is so upsetting. I was like, okay. I'm working so fucking hard. Like, I'm like, I'm at this level. Yes, it happened quicker, but I'm not getting any of these benefits or whatever, which is fine because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm doing it because I love it. But at the same time, it kind of hurt because I was like, why? Why are they getting, they're, why are they are better they than getting, me? Right. And I was like, we're at this, we have the same numbers. 
it, I don't see the difference. Yeah. And like, yeah, I'm newer to the scene or whatever, but like. Am I not good enough for some reason? Right, yeah. and so that really, really messed with me. And another thing too was that was weird was like, I didn't know any other YouTubers and I wasn't getting any like, recognition from them oh, okay. because none of them knew about me and you weren't in LA and I wanted to like make friends with them like I, I want you know there's so many people I wanted to be friends with and not a lot of them knew about me until I hit a certain point um and that was totally fine of course but it was also kind of like hard for me because I was like I just want them to know about me so I can like be friends with them because I, I it's weird too. who was that who were those people <sighs> so many I know Tana Dolan twins James Charles um, so you went from being fans to actually being friends with these people. And yeah. Like, what a head, is that oh, like a head trip? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's been really cool because I remember when I was younger and I'd watch all of them, like, it was my whole thing was it was like, those are people that seem like they would be cool friends. Like, that was literally what I had in my mind the whole time. That's are why cool I was friends? a fan. Absolutely. The best. And so, like, it's really cool to now, like, have them in my life in such, like, a different way, and I, like, I love it. They're so fun, and it's good, and I don't know. They're some of the best friends I've ever had, and that's really cool. Like, I can't imagine, like, not having them in my life. Like, it's fucking crazy. Plus, they can relate to your life, where your average yes. girl who's going at your age, who's maybe a freshman in college or still totally. in high school, doesn't understand brand deals no. and agents and And also, they get stuff. weird about it, and, like, so it's, like, it's you can't necessarily talk about it with sure. everybody. Because people like... And you're probably embarrassed talking about it. Well, no, but... You're not. I'm like, look at me. I'm so fancy. I got such a crazy no, life. Okay, true. I don't like that. Also, I have to go when, to the bathroom. Should I bring my mic? Are you, is there a urinal in there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's a fucking urinal just for me. All right. Okay. Should I take go. it? How do I take just it? Take it. Oh, just, just take it. We're not going to listen. Just take the whole thing. Oh, my God. You should listen. That's funny content. Oh, my God. I have to pee so bad. <laughs> Oh my God, I feel so, I was holding it for so long and I was like, maybe like, yeah, no, it had to happen and I feel great now. Good. I'm not antsy. Well, you know, I have nothing else to talk about. So you took a pee and- And now we're done. Now we're done. Peace, bitch. Peace. <laughs> I want to thank, thank you, you for sitting down with me. This was a blast. Thank We've you. We've talked for 45 minutes. Wow. And most of these, I'm not going to lie, a lot of these interviews are boring as fuck and I have to cut them down to make them interesting and lots of B-roll and stuff. We're going to do this whole thing. We're not, why would we cut it down? Why not? Your fans want to watch the whole thing. Fuck yeah. So we're going to do it. Follow her everywhere. Follow her YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me. Subscribe. We got to say subscribe. We got some cool subscribe. ones coming up. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I want to give a special shout out to our sponsor this week, Pet Canva, PetCanva.com. Check them on Instagram, Pet Canva. Um, they're really cool. What they do is they put pictures of your pet on all kinds of different products. And the way it works is you upload a picture of your pet, dogs, cats, giraffes, llamas, whatever you got. You select the product and they put a picture on all kinds of neat things like uh, the blankets are really cool. They do them on cell phone cases. They do a canvas, so like a picture of your pet that you put in your pet's bed or your pet's bedroom. They can stare at a picture of yourself. It's kind of cool. And then just sit back and let Pet Canva do their deal and create out art out of the product. Check them out. Instagram, Pet Canva. Their website, PetCanva.com. Pet Canva. Thank you. See ya.